Hi, my name is Yulia Juric. I'm a senior researcher at Glenus Glycoscience Company, one of the world's leading laboratories in high throughput glyconics. My field of expertise includes sex hormones and glycans, which are interconnected with aging processes in women. I would like to use this opportunity to present you with a paper that we recently published in the journal Aging. This paper describes how estrogen affects biological aging women and that we measured using the glycan age index. This was a study done with the help of our collaborators from the United States, Professor Wendy Court and a medical doctor, Peter Nigrovich. So glycan age is a recently developed biomarker based on glycans, which are actually short sugar chains attached to immunoglobulin G antibodies. So back in 2014, we performed a large cohort study based on glycans that showed us that the composition of glycans on antibodies change with lifetime and could be actually used to predict chronological age. However, for some people, their chronological age was very much different than the age that was estimated using the glycan age uh, index. And this was usually associated with unhealthy lifestyle or some disease risk biomarkers. At that point, we realized that the glycan age actually shows how healthy the immune system is. And this could be ideal for estimating person's biological age. So as we conducted more and more glycoanalysis, we realized that the most pronounced changes occur in women around their 50s. So it is the time when women enter menopause and experience a sharp drop in the level of sex hormones, especially estrogen. It is also the time when they often develop autoimmune diseases, which are associated with enhanced inflammatory functional antibodies because of the increased abundance of some special glycan structures attached to those antibodies. So in the research that we published in the journal Aging, we explored how important is the level of sex hormones, specifically estrogen, for the glycosylation of IgG antibodies. First, we used medications to chronically suppress the production of sex hormones in the ovaries of women. They were healthy and young, having a regular menstrual cycle. During this period, one group of participants received estradiol supplementation and the other group received placebo, which kept very low levels of sex hormones in their plasma as if they were in menopause. So the question here was, will the lack of sex hormones in this case cause changes in glycans? And if the answer is yes, will this affect the glycan age. So to answer these questions, we analyzed IgG glycans in women before and after the intervention. And we saw that placebo women had their glycan age increased uh, for nine years. So within six months of intervention, so medically induced menopause, women became on average nine years older than before the intervention. And uh, this we actually didn't see, and it didn't happen in women who received estradiol. So this showed us that IgG glycans, as well as glyconage, are under strong influence of sex hormones, especially estrogen, and that estrogen therapy could prevent the increase of glyconage that happens in perimenopause. And this discovery actually led us to another exciting research and the results are about to be published. So they're not published yet and you are having an exclusive. So besides aging, women in menopause more often develop rheumatoid arthritis. That is one autoimmune disease. And they actually have a higher risk of the developing cardiovascular diseases. But the good thing is that we realized that we could track changes in glycans many years before the disease develops. And based on those changes, we can stratify people with a higher risk of developing such diseases. And this 
opened a whole new area for us. So our main idea was to use glyconage as a biomarker to detect those bad changes in a person and try to prevent disease development. This would be a part of the personalized health monitoring, which would include men and women from their reproductive years on. But then we faced another problem because for women, it meant that glycan age could be influenced by fluctuating levels of sex hormones during their menstrual cycles. And the data on such glycan changes still did not exist. So with the help of our collaborators, Professor Wei Wang from Australia and Professor Manshu Song from China, who provided samples, we set up the study on a group of healthy young women and actually analyzed their antibody glycans at 12 time points along their menstrual cycles. We tested them every seven days during three months, regardless of their menstrual cycle phase. And what we saw was very interesting. We saw that glycans change periodically during the menstrual cycle and that those changes can be associated with menstrual cycle phase and the concentration of sex hormones in plasma. So the menstrual cycle starts with menstrual bleeding. This is initiated by low level of sex hormones and our study showed that women have increased abundance of glycans that promote inflammatory antibody action during this period. Well, after the ovulation, a high concentration of estradiol and progesterone promotes such glycan changes that make antibodies act anti-inflammatory. So in general, our research showed that these changes are minor, but in some individuals, they were relatively high, which means that woman's immunity really does change during the menstrual cycle. And this is very important discovery of our research, which is not only important for future epidemiological studies on the disease etiology, but can be useful in many other applications where sex differences in immunity are crucial, like vaccination strategy or therapy regime for autoimmune diseases or some other chronic diseases in women in their reproductive years, as well as for the longitudinal health monitoring with glycan age biomarker, which actually still needs to be further explored. I want to acknowledge all our former collaborators and welcome all our future collaborators in new exciting research in the field of glycomics. Thank you from the whole Genos Glycoscience Group in Croatia. Bye.